What's up guys, Travels here. Been meaning to put this out for a little while here, just have been busy. Um, but today we're gonna be just showing you Blue ISO Level 3 with Gamora and Nebula. Um, Gamora is gonna be G15, six red, seven yellow, all of her T4s max, level 80. Take a quick look at her stats. Um, going to L3 on the striker is almost completely useless without the L3 uh, skirmisher. She gets uh, deal 5% of this character's max health on primary target only if they have two marks of vulnerable. So you need an L3 skirmisher to even take advantage of that. So today we're going to be taking a look at this. I'm going to show you a couple different matchups. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a completely different team. Um, you know, just to mark targets and show you what she does by herself with one uh, skirmisher who's not an L3 versus what she does with, you know, say Nebula. Uh, and I'll show you Nebula too. Nebula is going to be an L3 skirmisher. These are her stats just for T4s. I only did her passive and I don't intend to do any more. I don't think her basic's worth it at this point in time. Um, on primary hit, apply two vulnerable, gain plus 50% focus for this attack. So really you're doing this for the vulnerable to add the additional damage to the skirmisher um, Gamora has a pretty massive health pool now so I was curious really to see what kind of damage this would bring at the very end of this video I actually go and do a quick war attack or sorry an arena attack and I'll talk a little bit about the arena attack um, as well from you know just what it was prior to what it was now um, and if there was any difference in case you really just want to know um, the skirmisher hasn't made any difference at all in the arena for me. Um, I was one-shotting Doom previously without it. Still one-shotting Doom now with it. Um, this T4 on Moon Dragon, I actually might finish. I'll probably bring the rest of these guys to G15 after Adam Warlock. Again, guys, if you like the content, please subscribe. Leave a like, comment, swing through the Discord, say what's up. Um, and uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to use Carnage because he's a pretty fast skirmisher and has the ability to mark early and then I throw Emma in as well just for her speed reduction really I just want to have more speed and just kind of get through this I'm going to play these pretty slow um, wave one was kind of annoying there's a dual taunt so you know for testing purposes wasn't great um, I go through and I mark the Hulk and then I end up marking cap too um, just to uh, make sure whoever's got the taunt up I can hit either or um, you know, and it's a little tricky because you don't want to you don't want to kill everyone and you want to leave marks on them. It's uh, it's actually a little hard because they they kill too fast. Um, this first one here, cap blocks like everything. So this is kind of a baseline damage of what it's going to do at six red with the two or with one vulnerable on and then the block. Um, so we're gonna basically see what a block does and. I think he might even end up having a defense up as well we'll see so right here um, we're getting into Gamora and I'm gonna use Gamora special every time to test this and the reason being I'm using her special is because her basic will one-shot everyone um, so the special was the, the best baseline I could do for actually hitting someone and then allowing her to use her additional attack without them already dying so you can see he does a block there, and then I'm going to slow this down. He's going to hit again, blocked again for 27,000 damage. That's one vulnerable, and that's pretty much the baseline of a block. Um, we're getting to Brotherhood here. This one was a really a pain too with the dual taunts. Again, we're going to use a special, and this was no block. And I think he has defense up for this one. Yep, he has defense up. And he's going. Gamora is then going to hit again for 54,000 damage. And again, that's one vulnerable applied. So we've got kind of our baseline with a block and a defense up. We've got a 27,000. We've got a 54,000. Um, this was like a naked Mr. Sinister. Again, one vulnerable from Carnage. We're going to go ahead and use a special on Mr. Sinister. No defense up. No buffs. One vulnerable. This is kind of... I guess you'd call it your max without a crit. And this one's going to hit for 103. So pretty consistent there. 
between the three with the one marks. You've got your block, your defense up. This was a fun one. I got to mess around with this a lot just because I got to keep killing all the minions and marking people and really get a feel for it. Um, so again, we've got the armor guard marked. We're going to use our special. It does say blocked for the first attack, and then we'll see on the second attack here. No defense up. Crits for 142,000 on the follow-up attack. So definitely solid. Um, that's just Gamora. Now we're going to get into Nebula. I went ahead and brought Cable as well, just again for turn meter. Um, most of the time, these like opening attacks can really destroy someone. So Neb's going to start, get the evades, get the assist, and she's going to mark, and you're going to get two marks of vulnerable on Cull. And Cull's going to have defense up. Again, we're going to stick with the special, and... We're going to go ahead and attack him with the defense up. So this should be somewhere around 54,000. And then whatever the additional comes in from 5%, because he does have defense up, very similar to when we hit Juggernaut. So we'll see what Gamora goes ahead and does her additional attack for. 62,000. So a 10,000% increase on a defense up on call by bringing Nebula to the L3 Skirmisher. If I'm just looking at this from a pure damage perspective, I'm probably saying, fuck that, I'm not doing it. This is actually where it's important. You can see Cull is still marked and still has a vulnerable, whereas if there wasn't two marks, Gamora would have already taken that off. So it actually leaves Phylavel to actually get a second additional attack as well. So that's something we need to factor in here. So instead of just saying, oh hey, it's only 10,000 damage. That 56, 57,000 damage that Father Vel just sent in would not have happened if Nebula was not a L3 skirm. So factoring that in as well, there is another additional attack in there um, that wouldn't have happened for another 70,000 damage. So, so far, that so far was about 80,000 extra damage added in. Um, this is just for fun at the end. So you can watch Gamora just tear this team up. Big heal on herself there. Um... She's gonna. This is a six red Thano, seven yellow, completely one shotted on a basic. This is why you can't use the basic, because she absolutely one shots everything. Going into <laughs> the next match here, um, this was a a really clean one. Again, we're using Nebula. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark Luke Cage. This is nice because Luke Cage is gonna have nothing on him. I think. So we see here, we're going to use our special. We have two vulnerables. With only one, we were on 50,000. No defense up was 60,000, I think it was. So this one should be a little over 100,000. Yep, and about 100,000 on the two marks for a secondary attack. So all in all, you're looking at like 10 to 20,000 damage. Most of the time, these two... You know, Nebula's going to hit someone, Gamora's going to hit them again, or someone's going to attack them again, and then Gamora's going to go. You're going to end up using a basic, and that person's going to be dead. So, not always super useful, unless I guess you're in the very high end, and you need another vulnerable, or maybe you're in a high end raid, and need a bit likely you're not going to use these two together in a raid, unless it's in the Greeks. Um, so, kind of a tricky tricky scenario it's going to be interesting to see when you do the mirror matches is it really worth bringing nebula to the l3 blue i'm going to just show you a quick arena attack i use this every single day you alt and this is before i had this is right now nebula has the three uh, iso blue but even before i had that i was still capable of one shotting doom so it did not make a difference in one shotting doom or not i had six reds now, if you don't have six reds and you have five, uh, it may, so that would be interesting to know um, if you did need it at, at lower red stars. Um, so that's always something to keep in mind, too. The damage itself, though, is really uh, not crazy. Just for people wondering, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, well, if Kestrel kills Gamora, this fight can go sideways. I've lost uh, Gamora to Kestrel in this fight many, many times, and this fight is still more than winnable. So if you do lose Gamora right here on a Kestrel alt, it really doesn't matter. Your team can still come back, just kill Kestrel next. Um, the other two are kind of irrelevant. 
and then you, you finish off Surfer at the end. Surfer can be annoying. Um, if he gets like a blind on him, he'll throw the blind back. Emma will throw a blind out. But this fight is uh, is pretty simple. You see Nebula goes down, no big deal. Um, and he, again, like I said, even if that was Gamora, that wouldn't have mattered either. We're going to go ahead and we're going to kill Kestrel. Um, Zemo and Emma are basically going to die by accident. There's Kestrel with a one shot, 340k damage. You basically kill everyone else with a special. And this is where you get Emma with the blind, which can be annoying. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to keep doing some more testing. All in all, my thoughts, I don't think the damage is crazy. I do think there's an additional mark there that may be beneficial as we get into mirror matches here. But leave a like, comment, sub, and uh, thanks for swinging by.